Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of House and Home. I'm Theresa Miria, and I'm so glad to be back and to be your host for tonight's episode. Well, besides this, big, big thanks to Mark Goyner Jr. and Godwin Eki for your availability in stepping in for me as host for the previous shows for House and Home. Thanks, guys. Anyways, my good viewers, I hope you had a great weekend. Some must have had a tough one, but have managed to pull through and are somewhat geared up for this week's challenges, tasks, and whatnot. Well, knowing that Mother's Day is just around the corner, I believe you all are planning to do something special for your mothers and appreciate all the hard work she's done since birth. Well, rest assured, we have a great bundle of delightful surprises all set in the pipeline just for you. We've got Brian Bell. Joining us on board is Topman's Cooking with House and Home, Animal Plus, followed by Plus Billing Yumi and Healthy Living with Mila. So let's begin tonight's show with Brian Bell sharing with us the Mother's Day gift ideas. Here's Jane Tokilala. Hello viewers, I'm Jane Tokilala and welcome to Brian Bell. Mother's Day is coming fast and falls this Sunday. So be grateful and say thanks to that special woman who once changed your diapers with something special from Brian Bell. As you know, Brian Bell covers a wide selection of great gift ideas. So come on, I'll take you through the shop and see how Brian Bell can assist you get a gift for mom. If you think your mom is lacking that physical exercise, then why not get her a pair of training shoes from our wide selection of shoes from our sports section. So enjoy daily walks with her which will definitely keep her healthy and physically fit. For the small business moms at home who are busy making money, why not enhance their business with our wide selection of sewing machines that we have available? Let her get creative with her sewing skills. Or get her an impulse sealer machine which will be handy for her. An SQ cooler would best complement the sealer machine because she can store ice blocks or goods in and keep fresh and cold for a longer time. If you're looking for something unique, make sure you visit our gift wear section because this is where we have a variety of personalized items that will be loved and treasured by any women. Take for instance the jewelries that we have available. Two hats, scarves, ladies wallets, sunnies, assorted bags to suit individuals manicure and pedicure sets, assorted bath sets, and personalized Mother's Day mug. Why not present her with a personalized photo frame with a family portrait? Now, isn't that a great idea? If you're visiting our soft touch section, we have towel sets, which includes face cloth, hand cloth, and bath towel. We also have storage containers for her personal use, dunas or quilts, and bedsheet set. And if she's a person who loves the kitchen, then we have a whole wide range of small appliances, cutlery sets, pots and pans to choose from. So seriously, if you're thinking Mother's Day gifts, at least you know where to go. However, if you're still not sure about what to get for your mother, then grab a Mother's Day catalog from Brian Bell to help you decide. And the best thing about these special events is that gift wrapping is free. The Mother's Choice competition has started and will run for the next two weeks. For every 50 kina you spend, you will be given an entry form to fill out. There are a total of 28 lots of 500 kina gift vouchers to be given away in the weekly store drawers and two prizes of the 5,000 kina gift vouchers in the nationwide draw, which will be drawn next weekend on the 16th of May. 
So make sure you benefit from this great offer and what better way to present your mom this Mother's Day with gifts and prizes of her choice. Thank you for those of you who have participated and congratulations to our seven lucky winners for the third weekly draw. So keep shopping with us for all your household need because you just never know you could walk away with a 5,000 kina gift voucher this Mother's Day. Now you know you can tend to us simply because you're backed up by Brian Bell's warranty, service and spare parts. So remember, great products, great prices, that's Brian Bell. Until next time, to all our mothers out there, Happy, Happy Mother's Day! Day. Thank you, Jane, for that beat. That was absolutely amazing and what a way to start the show. That's right, mothers are irreplaceable and very special indeed. So please, viewers, do make time available and drop by at the Brian Bell Home Centre located at Gordon's or you can also visit other Brian Bell stores and purchase something sweet for your mom. Time for a first break. We shall catch up soon. Welcome back. Topmans is one of our newest friends who have joined us on board with their brand new edition and this is their first show ever. Welcome on board Topmans to House and Home. So sit back and relax as the beautiful Deborah takes us through color psychology. Enjoy. Good evening viewers, I'm Deborah Telek and welcome to our first segment of Topmans for 2015. On tonight's segment, we will be talking about color psychology explaining about the different types of color and how color can relate to certain things. As the largest color and coatings manufacturer in the world, Axo Nobel ensures it is always one step ahead of our customers' needs. They are constantly monitoring trends from around the world and invite a select panel of independent design experts to forecast the color developments two years ahead of time at our Global Aesthetic Center. Our research and forecasting is always rooted in the real world and informed by both the design industry and the customer's behavior. We are able to provide vital information for our global market. So whether you are an architect or interior designer or just want to be an informed customer, our trend and color forecasting will be a vital part of your color choices. Do you know what the primary colors are? Color, whether architectural or in products, accounts for 60% of our response to a product or a place. Wherever we go, we respond to color, but the importance of color is often underestimated. The buzz about color is usually called color psychology. Color affects our moods, feelings, and emotions. Your feelings about color are often deeply personal and rooted in your own experience or culture. What evokes one reaction in one person may evoke a different reaction in someone else. Something as simple as changing the exact tone or saturation of a color can evoke a completely different feeling. Color brings change into our homes and in the places where we work. Therefore, it is a vital part of our lives. Color can also create optical illusions. For example, light colors reflect light and can make a small room appear larger and vice versa. Using a strong color in a small room can make it appear smaller and closed in. Red is vibrant and evokes passionate emotions. Green is calming and soothing, great for bathrooms. Pink is gentle and protective, ideal for a young child's bedroom. Gray promotes discipline, great for a classroom or office. White is associated with cleanliness and can make a room feel more open. So when selecting paint for your house or project, where do you start? Here at Taubman's, we have many different tools to help you with choosing color. 
starting off with our different colour cards, one for interior applications and one for exterior. Or you can have a look through our extensive colour fan deck, which has over 2,000 colours available. There are a few easy steps to take when choosing your paint colours. For example, if you are painting your living room at the house, you can choose a paint colour that matches well with your floor tiles, couches or curtains. After you have selected the colours that you might want to use for your painting project, I recommend that you get a sample of that colour and tape it to the wall in the room that you plan on painting. Leave it there for 24 hours, checking on it in the morning, afternoon and evening, as the light at the different times of the day may affect how the colour appears to you. To make things very simple for you, we will show you how to make a colour palette that will help you to choose colours for your paint project. It is as simple as ABC. What you need is a printed copy of the colour wheel on an A4 piece of paper. Choose a colour. Cross over to its complementary colour and go to the other side of the colour wheel. This gives a good visual contrast of colours while softening complementary colours. Or you can combine three colours that are next to each other. Choose one to dominate and use the other as accents. So there you go. You can now create your own colour palette and be an expert in no time. That's all we have for you tonight viewers. I hope you've learned about the different types of colours and what they mean and how they can relate to certain things in certain situations. Now you know where you can find all the best paint. And that's at Taubman's Resellers and Branches, your one-stop shop for all your colour painting needs. I'm Deborah. Time for paint, time for Taubman's. Good night. Thanks, Deborah, for that. I believe all you viewers out there have discovered something new. Big thanks again to Taubman's. Coming up next, we've got Cooking with House and Home, where we get to see what the winner for Vocal Fusion Season 1, Jacob Ilave, has to prepare for a perfect Mother's Day surprise. Stay where you are and don't go anywhere. Cooking with House and Home presents different types of simple and affordable recipes. Now let's join the winner for Vocal Fusion Season 1, Jacob Ilave, on Cooking with House and Home. So grab a book and a barrel and start taking notes. Trust me, this guy's too good. Enjoy. Good evening viewers, I'm Jacob Ilave and thank you for joining me on Cooking with House and Home. Mother's Day, coming up this Sunday, alright? And I know everyone is thinking of what gift to give her. But nothing quite says that you love her and care about her than spending time and effort into actually baking something that you've done yourself. So um, the fantastic thing about the recipe we're cooking tonight is not only is it uh, simple, very easy to make, but it's also very healthy. Um, we'll be baking a yummy, scrummy carrot cake. Now, this recipe only takes about an hour, uh, 15, an hour, hour 15 minutes, uh, depending on your preparation time. That's 40 to 45 minutes in baking, and then preparation of your ingredients depends on how long you take. Um, this cake uh, cuts into around 15 serves, and um, here at the bottom of the screen, we have the nutrition tags um, per serving. So another good thing about this cake is that it's dairy-free, um, so that if your mother's lactose intolerant or has certain uh, food allergies, um, the ingredients in this recipe are fairly simple. Now, um, for this recipe, you will need 175 grams of um, self-raising flour. Uh, you'll need 175 grams of raw or brown sugar. It's a bit better than white sugar because um, rather than just the sweetness, you're actually going for a more uh, richer taste in the cake. You need 140 grams of uh, grated carrot. So if you're getting that from the um, market, that's around three large carrots, 
or four small carrots. You also need 175 mils of um, sunflower oil. Of course, if you can't find sunflower oil, vegetable oil works just as well as a substitute and you can find that everywhere. Um, to add a bit of extra flavor in this, um, besides the uh, three eggs that you'll need, three large eggs, around 60 grams, but because um, these are around 50 grams, then we have four of them. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, for the real flavor of this, you need um, the grated zest of one large orange. Um, this adds just a little bit of zing and um, helps with the texture of the cake. For the extra spice and flavor, you have raisins. Um, it's, uh, here you need about 100 grams, but I have only 30 here because my mom doesn't really like raisins, so I'm going to put in a little bit less for her. Uh, otherwise, for spice, you can add a bit of ground ginger or um, nutmeg. Uh, around half a taste, uh, half a teaspoon of that, excuse me, and also just some mixed spice to throw in there as well. Um, a tablespoon of, sorry, a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda will also help um, give the cake the right texture. So now, when you start, the first thing you need to do is um, to actually preheat your oven. Um, if you use a gas oven, that's gas Mark IV. Otherwise, you heat it to around 180 degrees Celsius for your conventional oven. Now that our oven is warming up, we can prepare all the rest of the stuff. Now the first thing you gotta do is prep your baking tray. Um, here I'm just uh, brushing some oil lightly on the inside of it. When oiling your tray, uh, you can always add um, pieces of greaseproof or baking paper on top, laid um, either way, just to cover the bottom and the sides. That makes it easier to lift out, plus also, um, it helps it not stick um, to the to the tin. Otherwise, if you just brush it with enough oil or butter, that'll do the trick as well. So now that's done. Let's just chuck that on the side. Okay. And then um, once your oven is preheated, uh, your tray is uh, greased. Then you actually want to start combining your dry ingredients. Okay. So you take your flour. Um, this is already pre-sifted, otherwise you can just uh, chuck it through a sieve just to, if you want it a bit lighter, if you want a bit more of a, a lumpier texture, then you don't really need to do that. So we're adding our flour in. All right, so facing flour. So all your dry ingredients here, you add your uh, bicarb of soda, our mixed spice, and our cinnamon. Okay. Mix it lightly, it doesn't have to be really scientifically done. Okay. So you can chuck that on the side. So once the dry ingredients are mixed, then you actually focus on some of the other stuff. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to add in your raw brown sugar to the main mixing bowl. Okay, you'll need uh, to crack your eggs into here. So I'll just crack your eggs. Now you've cracked your eggs, get rid of your eggshells, clean station, always good. Now just beat the eggs slightly, otherwise um, when it comes into the actual mixing process, then it's gonna take a little longer. So just pre-beat them before they go in, make sure that those yolks are nice and destroyed. All right, so I'm just beating slightly out of it. Now to this eggy and sugary mix, you'll also need to um, add your carrot. Add your orange zest. And last but not least, um, your, oil, your oil and your raisins. Um, the raisins are really optional. I mean, a lot of people don't really like them at all, so then they just leave them up. But it, um, my mom's one of those health freak people, and she likes all that gross stuff, so I just add them in. So once it's all there, you just basically mix it all until it's uh, fairly well combined. All right, done. Now that um, all the uh, wet ingredients plus the uh, healthy stuff was all in there, we add in our flour. Now you can either, um, add it gradually and um, beat it in if you don't want to have to deal with all of them at once. Um, another good thing about this recipe is that you don't actually need an electric beater. 
because of the uh, the carrot and the uh, onion. Um, sorry, excuse me. The carrot and the orange. The consistency that you'll end up getting in the final product is something a bit more sort of rough and raw instead of uh, smooth cake like sponges or, or other other cakes like that. Oh, look at that. Yep, that's the kind of um, consistency you want. You don't want something that's uh, too thick or runny, but you want it a bit more of a, a thick paste like this. Okay, but once everything is sort of well combined, you don't want to mix it too much, because like I said, you'd prefer a bit more of a rough texture with carrot cakes than something smooth like sponges. So once it gets to that and it's sort of well combined and you can see no more lumps of flour in it, just look out for those. You wouldn't want your mom biting in and finding a whole bite of flour in there. So once that's done, all you gotta do is just chuck it in your tin. Now that's done, there's certain ways that you can actually plate it up and serve it afterwards. So what you could do now is actually add a bit more of your brown sugar on the top to make sort of a sugary crust or um, if you think your mom would prefer, uh, we're gonna whip up some easy orange icing to just drizzle on top afterwards. Otherwise, now that's in the trend, all you gotta do is uh, pop it in your oven. Okay. Now, uh, you leave that in your oven for about uh, 40 to 45 minutes or until um, it becomes springy when you touch it in the middle. So now all we gotta do is wait. So by now our cake has been sitting in the oven for around 40 to 45 minutes. Um, the best way to test whether it's ready or not is to just uh, either touch it lightly with a spoon or your finger. And if you see it springs back nicely, then you know it's done. So um, yeah, depending on the different heat of the oven, it could take slightly different time to cook. But around 40 to 45 minutes is um, the safe time to have it. Let's have a look at this. Okay. Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, perfection. And look at that colour. See, that's the exact kind of colour you want. If you added your um, brown sugar on the top, it has sort of caramelised and formed a slightly light brown colour. Otherwise, that's the colour you're after, alright? Um, because we didn't use baking paper, what you got to do is you just run a butter knife or a plastic knife just around the edges to help lift it out of the tray. But otherwise, that's got to sit on the side and cool for at least five minutes before you do so. During the five minutes when the cake is cooling in the tin, you can start working on your icing. Um, certain things you can do with it, like I said, if you put a sugar crust on it, that's good enough. If not, you can just chuck some of your icing um, sugar, icing mixture into a sieve and then just dust it over the top. That's another way to serve it. But me personally, I like not wasting um, the orange juice we had earlier. So earlier on in the um, recipe, we used the rind, the outside, um, the zest part of the orange. So what I've done is just passed it over a uh, juicer and gotten the orange juice. Now this is around 175 grams of um, icing mixture here. All you gotta do is add one to two tablespoons of your orange juice into it. And just mix it up. Um, depending on how runny you want it, you could add a bit more um, of the juice. If you prefer the icing to be a bit more, a bit less runny, then yeah, you just add a bit more icing sugar. Now you just keep stirring and mixing your icing until all the lumps have gone. So you know your icing is about ready when it's sort of this kind of um, consistency. Um, that means that uh, it's not so runny such that when you um, pour it over your cake it'll just run off the sides. And um, it's a nice, but it's not so thick that you actually have to spread it on but you'll be able to drizzle it on top. Um, of course, if it's too runny, or um, then you can just add a bit more icing sugar. Likewise, if it's um, a bit too thick and sticky, then you can just add a bit more of your orange juice. The beauty about adding this orange juice is that um, it's, it adds that really, you know, the, the orange flavor and the, the bit of the pith that you had in the orange actually comes out in the icing and really actually adds that extra healthiness that you wouldn't get by adding orange flavoring or something like that. 
And there you have it, a very simple, yummy, scrummy carrot cake recipe, which I'm sure that mum will love because of all the time and effort that you've put into actually baking something like this for her. So a healthier option, um, once again, there at the bottom of the screen are the nutritional tags per serving. Otherwise, happy Mother's Day to all your mothers out there and thank you for watching. Like I said, this guy's too good. Not only can he sing, but he can also bake. Thank you, Jacob Ilave. That was wonderfully done. I did enjoy every step of the way and I'm sure our viewers did too, as it is a good recipe to try out and give as a Mother's Day surprise for your mom. All right, once again, that was Jacob Ilave, the winner for Vocal Fusion Season 1. We'll take a quick breather and catch up on the other side on Animal Plus with House and Home. Stay tuned. Welcome back. A special relationship between humanity and animals creates an amazing bond. A pet owner always makes sure that his or her pet is well treated and groomed. Let's take a look at RSPCA on Animal Plus. Welcome to Animal Plus. I'm here at the RSPCA to show you how dog pound is carried out. The Port Mosby Pound has been in Papua New Guinea since our country gained its independence and is currently managed by the RSPCA of PNG and is in a successful working partnership with the National Capital District Commission. Let's go find out more about dog pound. The RSPCA provides pound facilities and services including weekly stray animal collection and the monthly tick and flea wash for dogs. The weekly stray animal collection is carried out by the NCD dog collection team and takes place on Wednesdays and Thursdays. They collect animals that have been surrendered, abandoned or rescued. In instances where pet owners are moving and are not able to take the pets with them, they are advised to surrender their pets to the clinic as this will enable the vets to find new suitable homes for them. This is done through the adoption program. To surrender, you can always contact the RSPCA. The general public can report stray animals for collections as well. The monthly dog dips are an initiative of the RSPCA and the NCD to help pets who have ticks and fleas. There are some being washed, so let's go find out and see how they've been washed. Let's go. Oh, look at this doggy. He's been washed. Wow, this is his first time. This dog here is his first time. And just look at the way he's been washed. Yes, he's been washed. So, Mr. Sen, can you tell us more about the procedures involved in washing the doggies? Yes, uh, we have a, a drop bath here. We used to mix them with uh, chemicals. And there's a small motor inbuilt which is connected to the power. And that same water that we mix chemical, we use that water to wash dogs. Uh, in washing the dogs, we use um, fado or concentrate and uh, mixed with uh, meldison. Uh, these two chemicals, one is to make their body look, smell fresh, good, and the other medicine is to, to remove fleas and ticks on their bodies. When we brush or wash them and then after washing them, some dogs, they have uh, more ticks, we used to remove them and then the small ones where they live inside the fridge, we used to spray them with medicine and then they will die in the body. And then we tell the owners not to wash them after one week to make sure that the chemicals are do their job to kill all the ticks. After that, they can wash the dogs and then kill the ticks as well. So what type of medication is used for the bat? Uh, we normally use two types of medication. One is the phytose or the concentrate and one is the uh, medicine. 
All right, name a few things that the pet owner can do to help their doggies with ticks and fleas. The only thing that the pet owners will do is to bring their pets in to RSPCA and then we will do the de-ticking, spraying and then they'll remove the ticks. Uh, the number of dogs that come in for the dog dip would be around 10 to 25. Hello, my name is Anessi and this is my dog, Murdoch. He's um, one year, two months. And yeah, this is our first time to bring him here to, the, to this um, dog pound to get him washed. Um, I missed out on the first couple of months, so this, it's a good initiative by RSPCA and um, Port Mosby Dog Pound. And I encourage everyone who has dogs to come and get your dog washed and uh, get rid of fleas and ticks and whatnot. So um, yeah, it's, it's a good initiative and I'll be bringing my dog here regularly. Yeah. This is our other dog, well, and she's uh, Murdoch's small sister. Uh, her name is Tane. Our mother keeps on changing her name, so. <laughs> yes, but her name now is Tane, so. So this is also her first time to come to the dog pound. And yeah, we'll be regular uh, customers here. <laughs> There you go, people. Now that you've seen the dog wash and have discovered the procedures, do visit RSPCA and get your pet treated and groomed. This happens on every first Saturdays of every month. Until next time, don't forget to join me on Animal Plus with House and Home. I'm Theresa Miria. Goodbye for now. For this bit on Plus Milong Yumi, we featured the House of Gemini, where my colleague Mark Goyner Jr. had the privilege to visit and display some of the amazing jewelry done. Check it out. Now, are you searching for something exotic, unique, or individually handcrafted for your loved one? Perhaps you're trying to make a statement about who you are or where you are in life right now. Or you're trying to get a special gift for your mothers for Mother's Day. Well, the House of Gemini is the store for you. Hi viewers, I'm Marco Nagini and for this edition of Plus Belong Yumi, we will look into the jewelry company House of Gemini. House of Gemini is one of the best and premium jewelry shop in Papua New Guinea. It has many talented jewelers and they craft wonderful jewelries by hand. Their mission objective really is making every person feel happy, proud and vibrant about what jewelry they wear, no matter what the occasion is. Every piece of jewelry made at the House of Gemini is different, therefore giving you wide varieties to choose from. So, this is Geraldine. She's one of the employees of the House of Gemini shop, and she will be explaining what happens here in this room. So, Geraldine. This is our workshop, and this is where our local jewelers make exquisitely handcrafted PNG jewelry, which you will see in the showroom. At the House of Gemini, expert local craftsmen produce a wide range of jewelry inspired by traditional Papua New Guinean art forms. The jewelers and designers work together in ideal conditions, keeping close contact with the demands of the retail operation. So Jerry has just informed me that Tao Rupa here is a senior jeweler here at the House of Gemini and he will explain the process of transforming gold, silver or pearls into fine jewelry that we see here at the House of Gemini. We are given raw materials like this, 18 karat gold or silver, 14 karat or 10 karat. And then we roll them out to the roll of the machine that we have and then we shape them up to whatever size or whatever 
whatever we are making, then we come up like something like this. We roll them into a um, wire or plate and then make things out of gold. Wow, Jerry, this place, all the jewelries, they look absolutely stunning and great. Um, they're all for both men and women, right? Yes. You have a wide selection of them. Uh, is it possible that we can have a look at some of the uh, jewelries that you guys have here? Yeah, sure. This is an 18 karat baby in the billum set. It's an earring and a pendant. And it's for women, right? That's right. We also have for men, cufflinks in assorted designs, but that's a kundu in black coral. So Jerry, I'm curious to know, do the customers come in and request for House of Gemini to design jewellery in their favour? We have a lot of customers that want their own designs, but we also custom make handcrafted jewellery. And uh, what does House of Gemini have in store for Mother's Day that is approaching soon? House of Gemini is offering a 15 to 35% discount off selected items. So if you're looking for something for your mother, please pop into one of our outlets and find something for your mom. Here are the testimonials from customers for the House of Gemini. I've been shopping at the House of Gemini for years now and I truly have never come across jewelry pieces so uniquely handcrafted and prepared as the ones at House of Gemini. I'm forever satisfied and look forward to my next visit to PNG. Robert W. of Brisbane. I love House of Gemini jewelry. There is nowhere in the world where you will find finely handcrafted pieces of gold and silver, purposely made to highlight and complement anyone's fine looks. Jenny A. of Sydney. House of Gemini, a place where modern method of jewelry manufactures, which are crafted by local talented Papua New Guineans who bring the uniqueness of Papua New Guinea into the entire world. Remember, House of Gemini branches are located in Brian Bell Home Center Gardens and the Art of Gold in Crown Plaza. And if you want to get something special for your mother this Mother's Day, please come down and purchase an unforgettable gift for your mother at the House of Gemini. Until next time, I'm Marco Nagenia, and this has been another edition of Plus Belong Yumi. That was the Golden House of Gemini. Indeed, it is one of the good choices to consider in terms of planning on buying a Mother's Day gift. Thanks, Mark. Let's take a break and we'll catch up soon. Eating the right kind of food and keeping up with daily body exercises makes you look young, fit and smart. Well, Healthy Living with Mila has more to unveil. So get in your best exercising outfits and join Mila. Enjoy! Hello viewers, I'm Mark Gonagina and welcome to another edition of Healthy Living with Mila. Yes. Tonight the lovely Mila Nash will run us through the best ways to make most out of your workout. Remember viewers, the key to achieve your goals is intensity. Whether exercise or class, 
that's intensity. Now Mila will explain further on the high intensity training exercise that she does here at her boot camp. So Mila, explain. Thank you, Mark. High intensity interval training are also called a high inter intermittent exercise, a sprint interval training, and also the new trend now what they call it Tabara. And the, the high intensity interval training exercise is a form of a cardio exercise, okay? And it is also um, it has a short intense that targets the aerobic capacity and aerobic capacity of the body. Um, the short intense of this, it may vary from four minutes, uh, four seconds to 30 seconds. Like for example, you do a sprint of 30 to 40 seconds and then a walking or a jogging for 15 to 20 seconds. You can see the intensity interval training there. There is a high and a low. And that is what a simple way of knowing what intensity interval training is. And also, intensity interval training, the reason why it is very, very popular, because it has several benefits. It improves your blood circulation. It improves your strengthening of your heart. It improves the metabolism. And most of all, it is a fat burning. Okay. Yes. So Mila, what do we need to know about when we are embarking on interval training session? We need to know the technique on the proper way on doing this type of exercise. From doing warm up, like for example, kicking, jumping, knee highs. You can do this, tell the viewers, you can do this three to five minutes just to warm up your body, your muscles, and also to bring your heart rate a little bit um, higher. And then you will be doing uh, the, there are uh, things that it involves. A superset, like for example, what uh, one of my, my boys are doing here, a bicep and lunges, and also a deadlift and triceps. So they are targeting a different opposite of muscles from the bicep, the front of the arms, and also the back of the arms, okay? And also the back of the legs and the front of the legs. Those are the things that we need to know. We target the whole of the body as a functional movement. We can do a complicated move in between the weight training, such as burpees, okay? Like for example, what my boy is doing here is they're, they're doing a um, lunges and bice, uh, bicep, and afterwards, after 20, 30 to 40 seconds of doing that, they can do uh, 15 to 20 seconds of burpees, okay? and then um, it avoid a prolonged rest to maintain the maximum heart rate. That is one thing, that's the reason why high intensity is a form of cardio, a cardio activity and it targets the anaerobic capacity of the body. And then 45 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds, intense workout, and you only have a 10 minutes rest, and back again. That's the main activity. And then, the last one is the cool down. The cool down is when you are letting your body to slowly uh, rest, especially your heart rate, to drop it down and also the intensity of your muscle. There are important, the very most important things to remember is you should avoid a repetition. Like for example, yesterday, you do more of your lower body exercise, like squatting, lunging, those kind of things. The following day, don't 
to refrain of targeting that parts of the body. What you have to target is the upper part of the body. Okay, once that you have done that, the next day, what you can do is you can do your cardio in moderation. Just walk around your village, walk around in marina, or walk anywhere. Or what you can do, you can do an intense running for 30 to 40 minutes, and then a slow jog or fast walking for 15 to 20 minutes. How many times a week do you have to do this particular workout in order to see results? We have to emphasize this, that doing an exercise, your body doesn't change in 24 hours, okay? I want to clarify this. We have been carrying that excess weight into our body. And then we started, this is most of the belief or expectations of, of the people, that when they started uh, doing a continuous exercises and in a month time, they are not seeing any changes, don't lose hope. Don't get desperate or frustrated. Your body will just change um, at once. It depends on what you are doing, especially what you are eating, okay? The most important there is you take it slowly but surely. Your body will adjust accordingly. Thank you so much for being on the show again, Mila. And we hope our viewers are taking down everything you have said. And we get to see them next time on Healthy Living with Mila, hey? Yes. yes. It is my pleasure, yes. Mas. Thank you, and everyone. I hope, tell the viewers, <laughs> you enjoyed our boot camp activity Saturday morning at RPYC. And thank you so much, Mr. James Ailing, for allowing us to use the RPYC facility. Thank you. Good night. And good night. Bye. All right, my good friends, unfortunately, our time has finally caught up with us. Hope you've enjoyed the show and are looking forward to doing something special for your mothers. Well, for me and the House and Home team, we wish you all, our beautiful mothers out there, a happy, happy Mother's Day and have a blast. God bless. Until then, I'm Theresa Miria. Stay safe and have a great night. Your life without and hope.